Uh, we want to welcome you to the Dallas Independent School District STEM Environmental Education Center. I want to say a very special welcome to the following schools. And there are very many of you joining us today. Thank you so much. Uh, Zaragoza, Lago, Lakewood, Martha Riley, Dunbar, Margaret Henderson, Macon, Truett, Joe May, Dorsey, Martin Weiss, Eladio Martinez, Stephen Park, Kathy View, Seagullville North, Chapel Hill, Peabody, Dezavala, McNair, and Hog New Tech. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, teachers, if you are watching and not signed up, please do so by going to www.tiny.cc slash pk-2 registration. Uh, the program today will be force in motion. During this virtual field trip, students will predict how a magnet can be used to push or pull an object and observe the ways that objects can move. Uh, Ms. Schramm will discuss magnets. Ms. Ramirez will tell you the way objects move. Mr. Dominguez and Mr. Monroe will tell you about the ways that animals move. During this program, you cannot ask us a verbal question, but you can go to www.towny.cc slash question space answer. Send in your question. I'll do my best to answer them during the program. And if not, I'll send the answers to your teachers and uh, share the answers with them and they can talk to you, to you about it. And now, Mr. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Ms. Ram, I'm going to tell you all about magnets. Hey, good afternoon. All right, let me get my screen going. And like Dr. Gorman said, we are talking about magnetism. So at the end of my part of the field trip, you'll be able to predict and describe how a magnet can be used to push and pull objects. All right, so we are going to focus on two things. How do magnets interact with other objects and how do magnets interact with one another? All right, so I've got some pictures here of some magnets you might have seen in your classroom. And some of those we're going to use here in the lab today. So the first part of our question is, how do magnets interact with other objects? So I've kind of compiled a group of objects that I have here in the science lab that you probably have in your home or your classroom. So we're going to see how magnets interact with all of these items. All right, so let's get to my table. And we're going to go one at a time. And I'm going to bring my little bar magnet close to the object, all right? So first, I'm going to try a little piece of wood, a little wood cookie. So I'm going to bring my magnet close. It didn't move. Nothing happened. So that means if there's not an interaction, that is non-magnetic. So I'm going to stick that back in the bin. I'm going to try something else. So I've got my paper clip. And I'm going to bring my magnet near. And it moved. It um, pulled it closer. It attracted. So it picked it right up. Whoop. All right, so that item is magnetic, the paper clip. All right, let's try a crayon. That's a no for a crayon, not magnetic. How about a rock? And you guys can be predicting as I do these, you can try and guess, is it going to be magnetic or not? The rock, nope. Not magnetic. Mm, how about a pipe cleaner? Doo -doo -doo. Let's see. The pipe cleaner got picked up by the magnet, so it is magnetic. All right. A glass marble. Ooh. If I could get it to stop rolling. Well, maybe if I set it in here, then it will stop rolling. Okay, ready? Boop. Nothing. No interaction. The glass marble is not magnetic. All right, how about a little ring magnet? It pushed it away and then it pulled it close. So the magnet is magnetic. That leads into our next part of the question that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. All right, now I have a soda can. No interaction. The soda can is not magnetic. Whoop. All right. Now I saved my two favorites for last. 
This is a compass. So I want you to focus on the red little dial. It's like a red little arrow. And I want you to focus on the red arrow as I bring my magnet near. So let's make sure you can see. And I'm gonna bring my magnet near and look at that. It pushes the red arrow, the red part of the dial all the way around. If I flip my magnet over, whoop, now it follows the magnet. So the compass is magnetic. There is a magnet inside the compass. All right, then we have little iron filings. So someone took some iron and shaved little tiny bits off. So it's kind of like small particles like glitter. And that's why they're in the Petri dish. So I don't make mess. So let me make sure you could see, and I'm gonna bring my magnet near. So I can actually drag and move the iron filings with my magnet. And actually there's a little toy that you may have played with that's called like the Wooly Willy toy. And it's got a guy's face and you can move the iron filings inside of it to make him a funny mustache. Let's see, I kind of made a face, kind of not. All right, anywho, I could play with that for a while, but I won't because we have work to do. All right, so let's separate these out. So we have our non-magnetic items. That was the glass marble, the little wood cookie, crayons, soda can, and the stone. So those were non-magnetic. Then the items that were, were the pipe cleaner, the compass, the little magnet, iron filings, and the paper clip. So I won't be able to hear you, but I want you to tell one of your friends next to you, why do you think those items were magnetic and the other ones weren't? So they have something in common that makes them magnetic. All right, tell your friend, what do you think? Okay, well, hopefully you and your friend notice that the magnetic items have metal in them. But you might be thinking, Ms. Shram, that soda can has metal also, but it wasn't magnetic, why? Well, not all, or not all metals can be magnetized easily. So aluminum, which makes a soda can, is not magnetic. Magnets are mostly attracted to Iron, cobalt, and nickel. Those are the most common um, ones that are magnetized. So those metals will be attracted to magnets. Aluminum will not. All right, so that answers our first question, how magnets interact with other objects. Now, let's see how they interact with each other. So you may have noticed that my little bar magnet has a blue side and a red side. And on the screen, you might see that the blue side has an S, and the red side has an N. That stands for the North Pole and the South Pole. All magnets have poles. They have a North Pole and a South Pole. So we're gonna see how those magnetic poles interact when we put magnets near each other. All right, so we're gonna go back to the lab and I'm gonna put my magnet here and I've got a second bar magnet and I'm going to bring both North sides close to each other. So this one's gonna stay still and I'm gonna bring this one close and we're gonna see how it interacts. So let's see. Whoop. Oh, it pushed it and turned it all the way around. So it pushed it all the way in a circle. So that means it repelled. Repel means to push apart. So if I hold this in front of you, well, you can't feel it, but if you were holding these, you will feel a force pushing apart. They are repelling. They don't want to touch. I have to push really hard to get them. So they repel, the north side repel. Now I'm gonna flip it over and bring the south pole to this north pole. And they pull together, they snapped right together and I can feel them. It's hard for me to pull them apart because they are attracting. They pull together. All right, now I'm gonna flip this one for our last go and we're gonna bring the two south poles together. And just like it did the first time, the blue south poles push apart. They repel and I can feel that magnetic force when I try to put them together. They just push apart every time. So let's 
review our results. So when I brought the North Poles together, they repel, that means to push apart. When I brought the North and South Pole together, they were attracted, they pulled together. Then when I put the South Pole in the South Pole, it repelled. So with magnets, opposite poles attract, they'll be pulling together. When you have like poles or the same poles, they will repel and they'll push apart. All right, so I wanted to show you this image really quick. So someone has a bar magnet, just like the one we used and those iron filings that we used earlier and they sprinkled them around to show you what the magnetic field would look like. Since we can't see magnetic forces with our eyes, someone put the iron filings because they knew it would make the pattern of the magnetic field. So the way a magnetic field would look is on the right. It has those arrows showing us the magnetic field and its forces. So that's what it would look like if we could see it. All right, so in review, our magnetism vocabulary, the attract when like or opposite poles attract, that means pull together. When similar poles interact, they repel and push apart. And magnets are attract metals, metal objects containing iron, nickel, and cobalt. All right, so my challenge to you before I send you to the next teacher is later on today, explore your classroom or your house to find more examples of magnetic and non-magnetic objects. All right, see you next time. My name is Ms. Ramirez, and in this segment, we're going to be looking at how objects move. So we're going to be studying motion, and motion is just the action of moving. So before we get started talking about words that describe motion, I actually have an animal friend for you guys, and I'm going to give you some clues to who this animal is, and I would like for you guys to make a guess to who you think it is. So this animal can move in a variety of different ways, even though it doesn't have legs. So this animal can slither side to side. This animal can go forward and backward. This animal can go up things and down things. This animal also has scales on its body. This animal actually smells with its tongue. This animal has a long vertebrate and this animal likes to eat meat. So it is a carnivore. So go ahead and make your guess what animal you think this is. Again, my biggest, get, uh, biggest clue is that this animal has no legs, but yet it can still move. So make your guess and I'll go pull her out. And if you guys said a snake, you would be correct. This is Pelota. She is a ball python snake. Uh, they get that name ball because she can actually move her body and curl herself into a tight ball. And there's her tongue. She can actually move it up and down to smell. And even though she doesn't have legs, she is really good at moving around. So we're going to go ahead and put our snake friend up and we're going to look at some other ways objects can move. So later on, you'll learn how animals move, but in this segment, we're going to be talking about the motion of objects. So the first word that we're going to look at today is the trajectory. So trajectory is just the path that is followed by a moving object. And there are several ways to describe trajectory or that path. So the first word to describe trajectory is Things can move in a straight line. So go ahead, feel, uh, feel free to pause the video, but think of some things that might move in a straight line. So if you take your hand and you do this, this is a straight line. So think about what are some objects that might move in a straight line. So as you guys are maybe riding to school, when y'all are riding to school, your parents are probably driving in a straight line. Um, also, when you're walking in the hallway, you're also probably walking in a straight line. Another way objects can move is in a zigzag. So what are some objects that you can think of that might move in a zigzag? And if you take your hand and do this motion, this is a zigzag motion. Our next uh, motion is wavy. So if you take your hand and do this, 
This is wavy. What are some objects that you know of that might move in a wavy motion? Now, if you've ever go to the ocean and you see the water, it probably moves in waves, just like this. Our next word is circular. So I know if you guys went to the state fair, you probably saw the big Ferris wheel. That is an object that moves in a circular trajectory. So if you take your finger and make a circle, this is circular. So again, our words were straight, zigzag, wavy, and circular. Now the next group of words that we're gonna look at describe direction. Direction tells us where is it moving or where is that object pointing? So the first word we're gonna look at for direction is down. So if you go down the stairs, another word for down is descend. Now, if you go up the stairs, the science word for up is ascend. So we're gonna practice this. If you would like, go ahead and stand up. You're gonna make sure your chair is pushed in because we're gonna act out some of these uh, direction motions. So if you're standing, the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to kind of stand on our tippy toes. We're gonna stand up, we're gonna ascend, and now we're gonna bend down. We are descending. So ascend and descend. So that just means up and down. And our next word is round and round. So think of some toys or objects that might go around and round. Now, again, if you went to the fair, you probably sat on a carousel. So again, if you're standing, we're gonna do the motion of round and round. So again, if you're standing, all you have to do is just go around and around in a circle. And sometimes if you go around and around too much, you might get dizzy. Our next word is back and forth. So again, if you guys are standing, see if you can go forward and then walk backwards. So forward and backwards. A good example of a toy that goes back and forth, so this is back and forth, would be a slinky. So the slinky goes forward and the slinky goes backward. So forward and back. So this is back and forth. It can also go up and it can also go down. So this is back and forth vertically and back and forth horizontally. Now the next group of words we're gonna look at deals with speed. Speed tells us the rate of motion. So how fast something is going. So the first word to describe speed, uh, speed is, is fast. So go ahead and think of some toys or some animals that might be fast. So again, if you are standing, feel free to stand in place and you're gonna run in place really fast. Now, what do you think is the opposite of fast? Hopefully you guys said slow. So if something's not fast, then it's going to be slow. So what are some examples of animals or toys that might move slow. And if you guys are standing, you can just walk really slow in place. So when you guys are at school, you probably need to walk slowly down the hall. So we have fast and then we have slow. And then Hero sleeping on the floor, I have my very slow dog, uh, Toby, and he's a very slow runner compared to his sister. So those are some words to describe a uh, Speed. Now, really quick, before I show you some of my toys, I do want to uh, do a quick little brain break. And we're going to see if you can do two motions at the same time. So I want you to take your left hand. And if you don't know which one's your left hand, take out your hand. The hand that makes the letter L is your left. So this is my left hand. And I know that because it makes the letter L. So take your left hand, put it on your head and move it up and down up and down. Take your right hand, put it on your stomach and move it in a circular motion, just like this. So now we're gonna see if your brain is smart enough to do those two motions at the same time. Now, some people can do it really easily and then some people get kind of confused because it is really hard. 
So you're making your brain do two different things at the same time. So those are two hand motions. So the next thing I wanna do is just show you a couple of toys that you guys are probably familiar with. And I want y'all to think, how are they moving? So what words can we use to describe their motion? So the first toy I have is this little guy here. He has a spring. I'm gonna make him move. And then you guys can give me some words to describe his motion. So is he fast or is he slow? I think he's rather slow. He's also moving forward. And he was moving in a straight line until he started to turn. My next toy is this little car. Do you think the car is gonna be slow or fast? Also, do you think he's gonna go in a straight line or is he gonna go in a zigzag? So make your guess. And the car went pretty straight and it was also super fast. My next one is this top. I'm gonna spin it. And let's see if you guys can describe its motion. So the top is going in a circular fashion. It's going around and around. It's also spinning really fast. And then it started to slow down. My next one is another top. And I have this little magnetic snake. And we're gonna see if they can move together. It might take me a couple of tries because I'm not really good at it, but you can see the little snake here is moving back and forth and side to side. So this one has a lot of different motions. And I think the top is spinning really fast, but the little snake is kind of slow. My next toy is this little pop here. So I'm actually gonna press it down and we're gonna see how we can describe its motion. Sometimes it takes a while for it to go, but it will eventually go pop up and then come back down. And then my last little toy I wanna to show you guys is called the Newton's Cradle. It's this little thing right here. You guys have probably seen it before. And I'm just gonna take one of these. I'm gonna raise the sphere and then I'm gonna drop it. So it got high and now it's gonna get low and it's gonna hit the other little balls or spheres. And you can see that they're moving in a pretty much straight line and they're going back and forth, sort of like a swing. So the big science word for that is a pendulum. A pendulum is just like a swing. Um, and so the last thing I have for you guys is a challenge for y'all. Uh, all you need is just a piece of paper and see if you guys can make an airplane. Just fold the paper in any sort of way that you would like, kind of experiment with it. Take your paper airplane and then throw it through the classroom and see if you can describe its speed. So is it going fast or slow? Did it go straight or did it go crooked? And then what direction did it go? Uh, so that's all I have for you guys today for uh, motion of objects. We're gonna give it back to Dr. Gorman to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Ramirez. And we did have a question. Give a personal example of something that uh, goes up and down. And uh, yesterday I had the privilege of taking my wife to the mall and every store that she went to, the next store that she wanted to go to would be on the different floor. So we got on the escalator. We went up in a straight line and we went down in a straight line. So we ascended and we descended both on the escalators and they did go fairly slow, thank you. but they went a lot faster than I would have if I had had to go up and down the stairs. Now, Mr. Dominguez is gonna tell you about how animals move. Hola amigos, en esta parte de su paseo virtual, vamos a hablar del movimiento y vamos a usar diferentes animales para demostrar diferentes tipos the movimiento. Hi friends, in this part of your virtual field trip, I will be talking about movement and we are going to be using different animals to show you guys different types of movement. And that's because animals move in very different ways to do very different things. So for example, this is a Lichianus gecko and he is very good at climbing up trees. Uh, and that's because he lives in trees 
Uh, he actually lives inside the hollow part of trees, of dead trees, so he has to be very good at climbing. Uh, and right now he's not doing a very good uh, job of showing you guys his climbing abilities, but he is very good at hanging on. Can you guys see that? He has very special feet that have very sharp claws that allow him to hang on to things uh, very well. Uh, but he's not the only animal that I am going to show you guys today. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some animals around our center and some animals that I own at home, uh, which all have very special ways of getting around. So let's get started uh, with our presentation. Say bye to them, Lichi. Bye, guys. Primero vamos a hablar de las líneas derechas o el movimiento que sigue las líneas derechas. Un buen ejemplo son las líneas que siguen en la escuela. Son derechas, ¿verdad? Let's talk about straight lines first or movement that follows a straight line. A good example are the lines that you form at school and hopefully follow in a straight line. Let's see some animal examples. A veces nos movemos arriba y abajo, especialmente en el recreo, ¿verdad? Sometimes we move up and down, especially at recess, right? So let's see some animal examples. En los columpios, nos movemos de ida y vuelta. On a swing, we move back and forth. Let's see some animal examples. En el carrusel, vamos en círculos. ¿Han ido a la feria? In a merry-go-round, we go in circles. Have you guys been to the fair? Let's see some animal examples that go round and round.
el último movimiento que vamos a demostrar es el movimiento zigzag o el movimiento de lado a lado, de izquierda a derecha, de izquierda a derecha. The last movement that we are going to show is a zigzag movement or a movement from side to side, from left to right, from left to right. Let's see some animal examples. Okay, amigos, gracias por venir a nuestro paseo virtual. All right, guys, thank you for coming to our virtual field trip. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Dominguez. Uh, we did have a question. Uh, what feature does a duck have that helps them swim? Uh, their webbed feet, designed like paddles, provide more surface area, push against the water, and helps them swim. And now, Mr. Monroe is going to tell you about animal movement. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mr. Monroe, and we're going to be looking at some other animals. Mr. Dominguez showed you guys a variety of animals, and I'm going to show you some that basically has the same trajectory and movements or motion that you observed with him. Now, I'm going to start out by talking about and showing you an example of an animal that we find in our post oak preserve where we have nature trails. And I wish you were here with us today. We'd be taking a hike on those trails. And the first thing you probably wonder is what in the world is Mr. Monroe looking for? Well, I would be looking at the trail underneath bushes and I would be looking for a little turtle that I know that we have in the post oak preserve. It's a little turtle that looks like this one. This is a three-toed box turtle. And this one I've had for several years. Her name is Teresa. And you know, when we find these little turtles in the post oak preserve, we don't bother them. In fact, when I see one, and if I've got a group of students, I will teach them a little bit about the turtle. I'll pick it up and I will examine it to make sure that it's pretty good in pretty good health and then you know what? I'll put that little turtle back in the spot facing the same way that it was facing when I picked it up. Because one thing I realized, that little turtle was on a mission. Now, most of the time, these three toed box turtles are going to be traveling in what you have already observed, a straight line. Because remember, they're on a mission. Most of the time, they are looking for food, nutrients to give them energy. And uh, that's why when I put the little turtle back down, I will put it in the same direction that it was headed. Now, a lot of times, this same little type of turtle may not go in a straight line, or animals may not go in a straight line. There may be some type of obstacle that might be in the way of the turtle that may make it come off the straight line and maybe get back to the original uh, direction it was heading after it got around the obstacle, making that living organism have a zigzag pattern, which you've already seen what that pattern looks like. But that's Teresa, the box turtle. Now, one thing about it, I want to, one thing about your, your, my part of your virtual field trip today, I want you guys to kind of remember that animals have different body parts that allow them to move in different ways. And Mr. Dominguez, he did explain that uh, with the first animal that he showed you. Now, Teresa here, she's a little different. She is a land turtle. So if I was to put her in the pond, she would be in trouble. Let me show you another turtle. And I want you guys to remember what a turtle needs, what kind of body parts that turtle needs to survive in water. This is red. Now red is a water turtle or an aquatic turtle. And of course, one of the ways that red would move is simply in water, it would swim. And a lot of times these red ear sliders don't swim in a straight line. They may swim in a circle because they're gonna be chasing little tiny fish as a source of food. 
Now, if Red would stick her, stick his foot out, yep, sticking one out, but I don't know whether I can grab it to show you. Red's feet are a little different from Teresa. Red's feet have skin in between the toes, and we call those web feet. So what does that do? That helps this kind of turtle swim, whether it's in a straight line, or whether it's zigzag, or whether it's in a circular motion. Most of the time when they're on the move, they're looking for something to eat. Another little animal that we do find in the post oak preserve, and a lot of times I'm looking uh, for these little animals, because of their body structure, they move in a certain way. Now, this is a millipede, and millipedes love to eat dead grass and leaves. Milla is a Latin origin word that means thousands. So this little animal should have a thousand feet. Now, I don't think this one's got a thousand feet, but I will tell you, it's got two pair of legs for each one of these little line segments that's in its body, okay? Now, you can see it has the ability to cling to whatever it's on. I don't have to worry about being bit or anything like that but its little feet are holding on to my hand, allowing it to climb. And most of the time, because of the structure of the body, it will travel in a straight line unless there is an obstacle in its way. And then it may have a wavy pattern or a zigzag pattern to get around those obstacles. I'm gonna put him up. Now, talking about up and down, can you think of an animal that would live part of its life in water and part of its life on land. And basically the way that it gets around is to leave the ground pretty high and to go forward while it's in the air and then land and then hop again. Now, you saw the kangaroos earlier, right? But these guys can really hop. I mean, that's about the only way they can get around on land, but they also can get around pretty good in water. Let me show you Hoppy Senior, and I bet you know what animal I'm talking about. Hoppy Senior is a bullfrog. This is Hoppy Senior. It's a pretty good sized bullfrog too, isn't he? And you know what? He's got very strong legs. And that guy, if I was to turn him loose in this room, he could almost hop all the way across this room, okay? So he goes up and down, up and down. And the reason that he's coming down is because of gravity pulling him back down. If he had wings, I bet he could fly. And also, I want you to look at his feet. He's got some big old feet and there's skin in between his toes. So when Hoppy's in the water, he's a very good swimmer. And most of the time he's moving in a straight line when he swims, unless he is after some food to eat. So there are a lot of different things that will cause an animal to have different trajectories, okay? Now, also back and forth. I didn't show this animal first, uh, the first section, but I'm gonna show them so in this time. Here in this container, there's an animal that we call a crawfish or crayfish. Sometimes they call them crawdads. If I tap here, or if I scare him in a way, these guys don't swim forward. They swim backwards, okay? They swim backwards. And so he can crawl or walk forward, so he can go back and forth. Did you see that? He's going backwards. He's flipping that tail and swimming backwards. So that's a back and forth action. So that's the crawfish. And then a lot of times animals, they move in a trajectory simply because of the space that they have around. Them. This little fish I have here, he's a swimmer. And most of the time, because he's kind of limited, he is swimming in a circular pattern simply because of the container or the space that he has, okay? So listen, guys, I hope I've helped you learn a little bit about how some animals move and uh, giving you a little more information about what was presented to you earlier. 
I hope you guys have a good day the rest of the day and come back and see us. I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Gorman in case some of you have some questions you might want to have him answer. So you got it, Dr. Gorman. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Uh, very interesting program with Mr. Hoppy there. Okay, the question is, what are so other animals that live in the post oak preserve and how do they move? Well, we have raccoons that live over there. They use their strong legs and their claws to climb up trees. Uh, we have coyotes that live in the post oak. Uh, they walk or trot in a zigzag line using their strong legs and muscles. They search for food. When they see a food, see a food or prey, they uh, usually run in a straight line, again, using their legs. And then we have owls. They fly around in kind of a zigzag pattern at night using their wings looking for something to eat. Uh, thank you, teachers. We do appreciate it. And now I'm going to share my screen. Here in this virtual field trip, students predicted how a magnet can be used to push or pull an object. Observe the way the object can move. Uh, Ms. Schramm demonstrated magnets. Ms. Ramirez, the way that objects move. Mr. Dominguez and Mr. Monroe talked about the way that animals move. Thank you for joining us. If you would, go to www.towny.cc slash pk two feedback, fill out a very short form and send it to us. We would appreciate it.